Howdy, but howdy everybody in YouTube land. What we have here is a chassis from a Mitsubishi projection television. Um, it is a chassis VS-60609. Uh, from a 60 inch projection. This was the last of the standard definition models before they switched to high def. Well, the customer told me he was watching it one day and it decided that he wanted to shut off and started smelling like something was burning come back on and everything looked like it was in the distance well I didn't knew right away it had to have something to do with the convergence but I went over there anyway and powered it on took a look at it and sure enough everything looked like it was a bow tie and the colors were completely misaligned so what we're going to do is we are going to repair it. Um, what happens is this chip right here, which is actually the more rare version, the 393 series STK, the 393 is got all six amplifiers built into one chip. Most of them have their typical 392 110s or 120s where there's three amplifiers per chip. And believe it or not, those are just your basic audio amplifiers um, because the convergence waveform is in the audio spectrum because it works with the vertical refresh rate, which is 60 hertz. But anyway, so, or 59.97 or whatever it is. But uh, So, the, the problem is these chips are no longer being manufactured. Matter of fact, the entire STK line is no longer being manufactured because there's no demand for it. Nobody uses it anymore. And not to mention, these chips are highly, highly, highly unreliable. Even the audio amplifiers, when they were used those back in the 90s, were completely unreliable. And believe it or not, they actually used some of those in power supply circuits. The RCA CTC 169 is an example. They used that in the auxiliary convergence power supply and it was unstable then too. And um, let's see, what else did they use them in? The PTK 195 they used it in. The, the CTC 177, 179 main power supply used them. And they were using a variety of different circuits, but the point of it is, is they're highly unreliable. And the only way to get these anymore is to buy Chinese clones, unfortunately. <laughs> They're just as unreliable. Um, Panasonic, or should I say Matsushita, still uses a variant of the STK in their audio circuits, their bookshelf stereos. And it's no longer the STK line, it's the SV line, if I remember that correctly. Because I have a spare chip kicking around somewhere. And they're just about as unreliable, but... They're not as bad, but um, the TV shut off because these two resistors right here are open circuit, and those are the main feed fusible resistors for the DC rail running up to the convergence. Um, usually what happens is the output transistor section inside the chip will fail, and short and in, in, in an out in a standard complementary output you have a top and you have a bottom transistor section and what happens is one of the two will short and will shoot dc offset into the coil and you can see right there where that has happened because those two 6.8 ohm resistors are smoked and they are open circuit so and when that happened it obviously draw excessive current and the only thing that saves the yoke from ever smoking into oblivion is those two resistors. So that was the, the smell he probably smelled. And the magic smoke being let out of those. And that's because one of the complementary transistors had shorted. Which eventually takes out the opposite complement. So both transistors will short. And then you have a shoot through condition between the two rails. And ultimately will burn your fusible links. Um, this TV is a little bit different because most of the time the plus and minus rail voltage that runs these chips are derived from the main power supply unit. In this case it is not. It's derived off the scan supply. 
which is that transformer right there. Um, basically the way this works is your horizontal drive comes out of that main IC and gets buffered and amplified through the transistors and same thing with the vertical which that's the vertical output right there and then it splits off into two separate sections one section is your drive transformer and horizontal output for your flyback high voltage um, and then it's also going a separate direction drive transformer and output for the yoke and this transformer right there and that's a completely separate circuit um, that transformer supplies the filament voltage to drive the filaments inside the CRT and that also has a secondary winding for the um, the plus minus voltage for the, the STK and the reason why I honestly think they did that is that way they can use a common transformer in all sets maybe for cost reduction reasons because they could have probably had that already sitting around but on top of this this has extra protection because this circuit is protected what's caused by the x-ray protect when there's a problem detected in this horizontal circuit the television gets shut down by the main microprocessor because an error signal gets returned through these cables back to the main micro which is probably that same chip um, because that's the convergence processor which is made by Pioneer uh, they probably hold the patents to that as why um, so anyway the main micro picks up an x-ray signal because there's something going on in here and it cuts the drive off and shuts down the entire circuit which is probably what happened when you said it shut off because the STK shorted and dragged down the voltage over here and burnt those two resistors up and obviously it was burning the resistors up and there was a short on that coil and it picked up the problem and shut down the te television but unfortunately it was too late because it burnt those two resistors out so when the TV came back on it was able to stay on because with those resistors open circuit the load is now essentially missing from the circuit so it's able to come back on um, so I went ahead and got the schematic which is right here um, those two resistors here, R R8, C48, and 49 are open circuit, but here's the, which, which is actually goes to the blue drive, so that tells me that the blue output, which is here, had shorted, the, the complementary outputs had shorted. One shorted, shot DC voltage through, and then, then eventually the bottom one, or the top one, whichever one, the complement, the opposite complement had shorted and took out the supply but here, here's the funny thing those are the fusible links before they go out to the main deflection board and those two are still good which are actually these guys right here those are still good that's strange but they are um, now if I scroll through here and find the horizontal driver output section here as soon as I get to it, it's right here. Um, you see it goes into two separate paths. There's the flyback, the output transistor that drives the flyback, then there's a separate one that drives the horizontal yoke winding, and the transformer, which is right here. T519 is that transformer right there. So with that said, these two resistors, 520, 522, which are 0 0.82 at 2 watts, they are open circuit. And if you read closely here, as soon as I grab my light, R522 and R520. They are open circuit. So, unfortunately, I can go ahead and fix it because and, and, and get it uh, put together but I can't show a YouTube video of it working because I don't have the television here but there's the replacement um, which is ordered from MCM Electronics and that's the total cost $25.68 well plus the resistors so uh, that's how we fix a television thank you for watching